Welcome to You Make the Difference. I'm Wanda Walker, and today we're talking to Patrick Cruz, who is the chairman of the Troop County Commissioners. He's also on the Troop Transformation Board, and so we're really glad to have you. Well, thank you, Wanda. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yes. Now, you moved here in 1985. You didn't have any family here. What was behind your moving here? Well, I was working for a bank, a private-owned, family-owned bank down in Dublin, Georgia, which was our, my home. And uh, I decided that I needed to try to uh, reach out into the corporate world of banking for some training and opportunities. So I had a friend from uh, Dublin that worked at CNS Bank, and we contacted him, and an opening was, uh, was, there was an opening with CNS Bank in Athens and LaGrange. And I really wasn't qualified for the one in Athens, so I said, well, let me look at LaGrange. First thing I had to do was pull out a map and find out where LaGrange was. Right. I'd never been to LaGrange. Had been to Callaway Gardens, been to Columbus. So uh, I actually remember coming to LaGrange for the very first time to, to take a look at the city. And it was, it was larger than the town that I grew up in, and I was, I was, we just fell in love with the town. Yes. And, you know, um, I worked with your wife, Pam, for many mm -hmm. years, and I remember her telling me a story about how when she was, I think, in the eighth grade, taking Georgia history, they selected a city and they had to report on it and she picked LaGrange and so she reported on LaGrange and then later moved here so we That's just true. said God was working in that. Yes I, I, and I didn't even know that story till yeah. after we moved over here but that is correct. Yeah uh, that is really cool. Mm -hmm. All right so you didn't have any intentions of coming over here and being the chairman of the county commissioners <laughs> <laughs> but it happened didn't it? That's correct. Uh, yeah what was behind you getting into public office? Well let me just say really truly I, I you know I never had any uh, life intention or desire to be a, a politician. This just yeah. came about, I guess, as we go through stages in life, different things come our way and opportunities. But uh, uh, several years ago, I've always, I've loved this community. Uh, we've had our opportunities to leave LaGrange over the years, but we made a decision. I remember we sat down as a, Pam and I, as a couple and decided that we wanted to stay in LaGrange. So we've enjoyed this community. We love living here. Uh, you know, we've raised our three daughters, and now all three of our daughters live in this community. So, you know, we want the best for our, our community and for our children and grandchildren. Uh, so a couple of years ago, I got kind of involved uh, with some things that were going on within our community, and I realized that, uh, you know, you, I needed to get involved if I wanted to kind of protect some of the, the values that we have here that it was important for me to get involved. And so I made a decision to, timing was right for me to step out and run for this office. Yes, and um, you've been the chairman now for a year. Yes, ma'am. Give us some of the things that have happened during 2015, the highlights of the year. Well, it's, it's certainly been a most interesting experience. Uh, and I always try to open up by saying I love people. And yes. to me, a large part of politics is, is working with people and helping them solve their issues and solve their problems. So I think for me during this, this past 12 months, some of the most interesting experiences is I probably, number one, have more calls about animals running loose than yes. I have anything <laughs> else. So I've gotten those calls about the neighbor's dogs. Uh, uh, so we get some of those issues. I've had a wonderful opportunity to meet uh, different citizens across the community. Uh, been involved with some of the decisions as far as economic development opportunities. Mm -hmm for the community. Uh, highlight was getting to go to uh, Korea in uh, October as a guest of Kia and uh, Saewon. Um, so I got to go experience the Korean culture. And um, just being involved and hopefully, you know, really truly trying, thinking that I can make a difference in my community. Yes, and so who has mentored you as you've entered the world of politics? Okay. Well, I think one of the first people I thought about and I just went back to was a gentleman, Holly Smith, that was the first chairman of our county commission. Holly, you know, worked at CNS Bank, and he had retired before I moved here. And he was a politician, and, and uh, I, I, as I get around, Holly had a real good reputation in the community of helping work with, with groups and individuals. And I think that my training of being in the banking business for so long has, has given me a certain thought process and a and a way of doing things that I think about Mr. Hawley a good bit. Yeah. And uh, then, you know, there's, there's leaders, um, I think of President Ronald Reagan, who inspired people. 
And uh, so I, I'd like to inspire people in the community to, to want to do better uh, or to have better things in our community uh, and to get involved with, with government. Yes. And so talk about some of your experiences that prepared you for the leadership of the county. Well, one of the first things that I've always believed in is you've got to get involved in the community. So for the for the 30 so years that I've lived here in Troop County, I've, I've always tried to, to get involved in different activities in the community. That's been from civic clubs, and I've been a member of uh, the, the Kiwanis Club here for a long time. I've been involved with Boys and Girls Club, the Red Cross, the United Way, Twin Cedars, Troop Transformation. Yes. Uh, but I've, number one is I believe that it's important to get involved in the community. So my roles of, of helping those different groups uh, has allowed me to serve as president of the club, I've, groups, I've been treasurer. So I think those opportunities have prepared me for, for leadership. Uh, it certainly has given me an opportunity to meet a lot of people across this community. And when you run uh, a countywide race, and you think there's 70 plus thousand people in Troop County, uh, and I don't know near all of the people, uh, th those, those relationships I've developed with people have, have helped me quite a bit. Yes. Okay, let's talk about the economic challenges of Troop County. What do you see as those challenges? Well, I think there's several things facing us as a community, and, and again, I'm very pro on, on LaGrange and Troop County and West Point and Hogansville. To me, the glass is half full. Uh, but some of the things that we face as a community uh, are things to do with education being one of the most important. Uh, as we talk to the supplier, I mean the, the manufacturers like Kia and their suppliers, uh, finding a good quality workforce is very, very important. And I had a conversation that has been about a year ago with one of the major uh, uh, temporary services here in town that does a lot of, lot of work with Kia and their suppliers. And it was very disappointing that one of the issues they raised was that they reject about 25% more of the applications in this community than they do in other communities for drug, for people failing to pass the drug test. Huh. And I, so I you know, started trying to delve in with that a little bit. You talking about Troop County people? And they said, no, it's, it's really all the people that apply for jobs at Kia. So it could be from our neighboring counties or as far north as Fulton or Cobb or somewhat. But it was very disappointing to know that 25% more of our applicants yes. failed the drug test. Yes. So I think as a community, that's something we need to be well aware of. Uh, again, having a good skilled workforce. I know in talking to Kia that one of the number one hardest jobs that they have to fill are maintenance people. And, and that surprised me. But I think an educated workforce is one of those challenges that we have. I think the fact that we're kind of in the in a triangle between Munin, Columbus, and Auburn is challenging for us at yes. times. And uh, in one way, our citizens see all these things that's going on in the other communities, and they want some of that here. And the fact that we're so close to those other communities and they've grown faster uh, has, has been a challenge. Uh, and I remember when I first moved to LaGrange, Munin didn't have a theater, and all the people from LaGrange would drive up to Munin to the theater. People from Munin would come and shop and dine in LaGrange. And, and you know, we've seen that role reverse. But I do believe we're in a perfect location. Uh -huh. it, we're, it's natural uh, to think that we're going to see some growth in this area in the next several years. Okay, so what do you think that we have working for us economically that's going to help us? Well, I think location is, is one of those things. Uh, the fact that we are so close to, the, to Atlanta, to the Atlanta airport, uh, that we're located along a very busy interstate system. And if you look at a, a, a lot of the communities across the state and across the country that have grown, the interstate system is one of those driving forces. Uh, I think we have a very diverse manufacturing group, uh, I mean, group here in LaGrange. You look at some of the other communities around us, for example, Newnan or Carrollton, name me five Fortune 500 companies that are located in their community. Yeah. And uh, we, have a very, we have a very good solid manufacturing base. Uh, we're lacking retail, and that's what we hear from a lot of people. And I do know that, for example, our chamber is very involved in working with national groups uh, to help bring more 
retail opportunities to our community. And there's some activity around the mall. We've got a couple areas right now that we're seeing some growth. We're seeing some growth in our industrial base right now. We've had some announcements recently of uh, uh, new jobs coming to our manufacturing side. We did approve a, a tax allocation district for the, for the owners of the mall, and they have some big plans to bring some, some new retailers to town. And so um, you've already seen some activity with a new building going up, and we've got two new uh, additional groups that we are looking for announcements very, very soon. Um, and then we've got our proposed Great Wolf yes. development around Whitesville Road exit. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Well, uh, you know, when people started mentioning Great Wolf, I'd never been there. Yes. So I was like, what is this place? So after being in a meeting or two, I went home and decided to Google Great Wolf Lodges. And uh, I looked particularly at the one in, in uh, Charlotte area and started hearing people from LaGrange that had taken their kids or grandchildren to Great Wolf. So I, I tell everyone, go out and Google and learn a little bit about Great Wolf. But I think it's an, it's a, what people need to understand, this is going to be a destination. Uh, you know, we have some people saying, well, our folks won't be able to go to that. That's, that's not entirely correct. This will be a destination like Six Flags or Disney World or, or other amusement type parks uh, that people will, will bring their families. It's a family type environment. Mm -hmm. They'll bring their families here to stay in their, their lodge. And then there'll be a huge indoor water park uh, that they will, as guests of the lodge, be invited to, to go and participate in the, at, at the uh, water park. Right. Uh, and on the website in Charlotte, they had opportunities for you to hold, for local people to hold birthday parties. And I think there will be other events to, uh, to allow our local citizens to participate. But again, we got to remember this is a destination. People will come to LaGrange and these, they target families that have an income of over $100,000 a year. So these people will come, uh, spend the night, shop, uh, and then they'll go home. And so we don't have to worry about building lots of roads right. or new schools to accommodate those people. Uh, but there's also a huge retail component to this. So we're anticipating, a, uh, you know, like maybe another theater, uh, restaurants uh, that'll come along as a part of this. Yeah, that's very exciting, yeah, isn't it? It is. Now let's talk about your trip to Korea. Okay. Uh, tell me what that was about and your experience and just how you enjoyed the culture and those kinds of things. Well, first let me say it was a wonderful, wonderful trip. I did have a little nervous about going over there. Uh, but Kia uh, tries to each year uh, take a few people, uh, leaders from the community uh, to Korea to learn a little bit more about their operations. But a large part of the trip was about uh, we did some tours uh, to learn more about the culture of the Korean people. And so Todd Tentler, the county manager, yes. uh, Cy Wood from uh, the Valley Times newspaper, uh, the three of us went along, uh, hosted by Corinne Hodges, who is PR for uh, Kia. We left out in October and did a, uh, which was almost a week long trip. Uh, we flew into Seoul. Um, we spent a, a one day with Kia and touring some of their facilities over there. And then towards the end of the week, we spent some time with Saewon, one of the major suppliers to Kia. Uh, but, but really, a lot of the trip was about touring Korea and uh, visiting some of their national sites and experiencing uh, food and, and dining in Korea. But I did have a wonderful trip. Um, my wife had already packed me with uh, peanut, peanuts, peanut butter crackers, and so my suitcase was full of a lot of things to, to uh, eat on, and I honestly only ate two cheese crackers the whole time I was gone. Wow, so you enjoyed the food. I enjoyed the food. It was yeah. very good. Uh, I had to navigate a little bit, uh -huh. but uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful experience. That's great. I know uh, when I went to Israel, uh, we stayed in a hotel, and they cooked with some kind of spice that I was just like, Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> and so I had crackers too. Right. But I ran out of crackers. <laughs> but I was, you know, the next time I went to Israel, you know, I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure I had enough crackers. But the food was different. The next time I went, I that guess was it was right? yeah, I guess it was just where I was staying that they were using that strong spice, and it was like, mm -hmm. oh no, I just can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one of the interesting things is one of the uh, local Korean uh, gentlemen told us. 
The thing about when you land over there, when you get off the plane, you're going to see Koreans everywhere. Yeah. And one of those facts that I didn't know is Korea is slightly smaller than the state of Georgia. And where we have about a billion people, they have five billion. Wow. Wow. And so, not billion, I'm saying million. I'm sorry. No, I got my numbers straight. They've got five times the number of people yeah. that we have. I'll get <laughs> give the numbers straight. But it is, I mean, their population is huge on a land mass that's equal to the state of Georgia. Wow. So there were, there were Koreans everywhere. Yes. Um, very, very busy people. Uh, their cities, their Seoul and the other cities we visit are just as modern as any of our cities here. Um, so it, it was very interesting to see, see their culture. Yes, and also I know you probably have toured the Kia plant here, mm -hmm. but the Kia plant is very impressive right. in the way that they use those robots and how cars go up and they go, the floor opens and the cars go down and it, right. it's just amazing to see that operation, isn't it? It is. And the interesting thing about Korea, I noticed they have no car dealerships. Yeah. Like where we would go, like we go out Lafayette Parkway here in Lagrange, and we see these big car dealerships. Uh, most of the places we saw in the big cities maybe only had four or five cars in a small building. Oh, really? And so I, was like, I asked them, "Where's the car dealerships? Where's all those 150 Kias or, or Hyundai sitting?" And they don't have those. It's huh. very interesting. Uh, yeah. It's just very different. Yes. Okay, um, Patrick, let's talk about what has been your most rewarding experience that you've had as the chairman of the county commissioners? Well, I think the most rewarding part of me is just being able to work with people to try to help them with their issues, whether it's the, the neighbor's dog that's running wild or um, issues of uh, discussions about crime, uh, you know, people's concerns about crime in our neighborhood, or representing the county when we have opportunities to go to Korea, yes. or if someone's coming to LaGrange, we, we've been on some meetings with other outside business people. You know, you, you know that you're representing your county and all the, the individuals that live here. And so um, I've, I've enjoyed those, those experiences. Yes, now, and where do you see Troop County going? Like in the next 10 years, what do you see happening in Troop County? Well, as I said, I believe we're in a perfect location to see growth in our community. And I think we as a community, uh, you know, the challenges for us is to have smart growth, as we talk about, the, the kind of growth that we can kind of manage and we can see our community grow in the right areas. Uh, I don't have to name any communities, but most of us know that some communities to the north and south of us have huge traffic problems. Yes. And I think we have the opportunity to prepare as the growth comes to our community that we can kind of pick what we want. And we often decline uh, industrial prospects that's coming here. They're not producing the right kind of jobs or enough jobs, or maybe there's just something we as a community don't want. So we have the opportunity to sit back and watch what's coming this way and to plan and, and I love the, the, the community, the small town community feel that LaGrange has, and I hope that we never let that, the, the, the downtown area, our square and the amenities we have in our downtown area, that we don't ever become just a community out beside an interstate. So uh, I think that's something we always have to protect and, and place a high value on. Yes. All right. And uh, I want to talk about how you feel your faith affects your position. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm a very religious person. Uh, I come from a family that was uh, ruled by nature, my mother's family, and they were hardworking people, and they came through the Great Depression, and, and my grandfather raised a family of eight. Yeah. And uh, they believed in working hard, uh, but Sundays was, was their day that, you know, they, they rested and they visited with each other, and uh, unexpected guests were always coming by the house on Sunday, and. My, my grandmother had to prepare meals for she didn't know who, but Sunday was a day of rest. And you know, our society's changed a lot since then, since that time. But, but the, the values that, that I was raised with as far as faith and family have, have remained very strong for me. Um, and I think that one of the principles that, that I want to try to always live by is the golden rule of treating others the way that I'd like to be treated. And so, you know, when you're dealing with, with constituents or, or citizens here, that you treat them 
uh, with respect. Yes. The way they should be treated. Uh, and so that, those, that's one of the things that's very, very important to me. Yes. And um, I just want to say that, you know, I was talking to Pam, your wife, and I told her, I said, you know, the more I get to know Patrick, the more I really like him. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, and, and respect, you know, respect yeah. who you are. And, you know, sometimes when you get to know people, it's like, ah, mm -hmm. but, but you have a richness and a deepness to you that's, that's really good. Well, I, I appreciate it. And, you know, we have a great, uh, great community here with our churches, and I've been very active in my church and, and looking for opportunities to serve the, the citizens here in, in, in Troop County. And so I was very impressed when I moved to this new community and I heard about something called the Callaway Foundation. Yes. And I know in my community, we didn't have such an asset. Right. And so when our band or our, uh, they need to build something in town, you know, there wasn't someone that would, would help match or make contributions. So uh, I think that we're very fortunate to have something, uh, have this asset in our community. Um, Yes, and I do too. Yeah. Yes, it, it's very comforting. You know, when you're sitting in a meeting and uh, you come up with some plans and you think this would be great if we could get this in our community and this, That's right. maybe we could ask the Callaway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that my family and friends that, that visit from Dublin, they're, they're very impressed and that most of them would die to have a, an organ, a foundation like that that is forward thinking and is very supportive of our community because the face of the foundation could choose to, to fund lots of things in other areas of the country, but they choose to spend a lot of money in their own community. Yes, and let's talk about just a little bit. I know that you've been involved with the dental clinic right. since it started. Right. So tell me about, you have a passion for that, don't you? I do. A very good friend of mine from college was a Baptist preacher and he uh, started a free dental clinic up in Kentucky. So when he and I would talk, he would tell me about what his clinic was doing. And about that time, there was some efforts in LaGrange to address the need, the health care needs of our community. And so in some discussions with that group, I started looking for the idea of could our church sponsor the dental portion and the, another group could do the, the medical part. So David Henson was, was my friend and he and so and I talked with him about it and we came up with a plan and very fortunate that I ran up with Margaret Ross who yes. was the wife of a, a late dentist here and a great volunteer in the community and so Margaret knew how to run a dental clinic and I also talked to a couple of the dentists in town and so when we started in October of 2007 we started out a little trailer that was loaned to us by the, the health, local health department and we started out with a, a lot of volunteers from both the dental dentist and dental assistants and all. And so we've been operating since 2007. Um, and we see on the average maybe 15, 16 patients each Thursday night when we operate. There is a huge demand in our community yes. for this service. Um, and what I also learned through this whole process is that your dental hygiene is, is, is one of those first things that you need to take care of to prevent a lot of other medical issues. If you don't have good uh, oral hygiene, uh, then it can lead to blood pressure issues. Uh, we had a lady one night that had a blood infection. The dentist told her she needed to see a doctor the next day. It was life or death for her. Wow. So I learned this from having conversations with Jerry Fultz, administrator of the hospital also, that it is, it is one of those things that you need to treat on the front end to save off other problems. So we've had a wonderful time. I've seen a lot of people come and go, volunteers. Uh, some of the best ones are those young people that want to go to dental school. Yeah. And they get to get in there and get right into somebody's mouth and look with, the, with, the, uh, with other dentists there. Um, and so I've, I've been enjoying seeing the dentist. And another byproduct is we've had about three or four uh, mission trips to particularly Mexico. Oh, yes. Um, so we've had some mission trips where some of our dentists have gone and hygienists. And then this past year, we decided that we would focus on LaGrange. And so they did a, a dental mission for three days straight. Wow. And saw several people. Yes. Hundreds of people. Yes. And it has a waiting list, right? We generally always have a waiting <laughs> list. Um, again, the demand is so strong that we, we do generally have a waiting list. And it's, it's normally first come, first serve. 
Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, and I know you have other passions too, and it, it's um, it's great in this community that when you have a passion, that you usually can connect with somebody that can help bring that about. But I know you had a passion for bringing men together, and right. did the brother to brother. Mm -hmm. Talk about that passion a little bit. Well, I, I think a couple of years ago, you and I worked on on working on some of the issues, and we we came up with the idea of doing a men's event, and. Uh, you know, the very first year we had Steve Bartowski, one former Atlanta Falcon quarterback, uh, and Marcus Pollard, who was kind of a local product here from yes. the NFL. And we had a men's event with them. And uh, I'm now working with a, with a group at my church to look at doing another luncheon type uh, event uh, for men. And uh, so we're, we're kind of working on that idea right now. But uh, yeah, that was... Uh, that was one of those fun things to get to do and meet meet one of your heroes from the NFL and uh, and then meet a new person, Marcus Pollard, yes. that I never met before. Yeah, and then the next year we had Tyrone Poole. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, the person from Auburn, the kicker. Yes. Right now I can't think of I can't his, think his of name, but it, it was a good one. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was a lot of fun. It was. Yeah, it was. and um, I know you've been involved with Twin Cedars. Been involved with Twin Cedars yeah. for a long time. Do you want to say something about Twin Cedars? Well, Twin Cedars, you know, does a lot of work to to help particularly young children that have been either sexually abused or have abused someone, and it, it's a terrible. I know that when it really hit home with me was when I became a new board member and went to orientation, and three of the young men that were in the program had to speak to us, and even though they didn't identify themselves, one of those was from my home county. Oh, wow. And it really struck home when I heard this young boy talk about what had happened to him. And so I've been involved with, with Twin Cedars for now over 16 years and have actually uh, graduated to the foundation board now, so not the operating board. But it's another one of those great things that's going on in our community to try to help, help yes. folks. Okay, well, Patrick, we appreciate you coming well, in you and again. talking to us. Thank you again. I appreciate it. All right, thank and you. And thank you for watching You Make the Difference. And remember, you truly do. And I just want to say, when you let Christ live through you, you make an eternal difference. It's just not a difference for today, but it's a difference forever. We'll see you next week.